Hey everyone, my name is Neil and welcome back to my garage and today we're going to be building a DIY simple cart. Now one of the great things I love about this cart, I've been using it in my garage for about two years and it is a workhorse. It can hold any tool, basically big or small. It is great for any application you need where you don't have a lot of space and you need an auxiliary table, something to go alongside your workbench, especially when it's also covered in parts. This is also a great first project, one of those really good ones for new woodworkers because it doesn't require a lot of accuracy and you can put it together with some basic tools. Now to save you some of that design time and time picking out materials, we also have a build plan that we're gonna be releasing for this. We're gonna put a link to it down in the video description below. So without any more hesitation, let's get started on the build. Come on. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our drywall square and we're gonna mark out where we need to cut our project panel. And you can pick up this project panel from any of the big box stores. And once you do, we're gonna use a either circular saw or track saw. In this case, I'm gonna be using a track saw just because of the dust collection feature and the clamps that I could use to help keep the track in place. Now, when you cut this, you wanna make sure you take your time as long as you go in a straight line if you're using a circular saw and grab the offset piece because you don't want that to drop to the ground. So now that we have our tabletop cut to size, we're going to be moving that out of the way and saving that for later. And it's lunchtime, so I'm going to take a quick break. And then we're going to move over to the miter saw, where we need to cut all the pieces on our 2 by 4s for our apron, our legs, and our bottom supports. So here we're just going to be using the miter saw to cut, take your time, and then make sure that when you do, you have a nice clean edge. And we actually set up a stop block so that we can make our repeatable cuts. And that's where that's going to come in handy. So here I'm just using a piece of lumber that I've already used. And then if you have to make a cut on a circular saw, you can use a speed square. So now that all of our carts are done, if you like what you see so far, don't forget to subscribe. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting out our pieces for our top apron here. And right now we're going to pretend that we're going to use wood glue. I'm not going to be using wood glue on any of these joints because I'm going to be using this lumber for another project. This is actually the second time I've used this. I did it for a simple workbench. If you want to go ahead and check that out, you'll see the link here in the top right. So we're going to be using the speed square that we got, and we're going to drill our first pilot hole. If you need to look at any of the tools, don't forget that they are down in the video description. And once we drill our pilot holes, we're going to be using a countersink bit in order to drill for our screws. And then we're going to be using our other drill in order to put in our screws here for our top apron. So we're going to do this for all four sides and we're going to take off the clamps and then we're going to rotate it over and clamp it down and then drill, repeat the process again and drill for our pilot holes here and then put in our screws. So the key for this is you want to make sure that you drill those pilot holes otherwise you run the risk of having your lumber split on you and that's never fun. Trust me, it's not something you want to encounter. So now here on our last side, we're going to go ahead and check for square. And once we do that, we're going to drill our pilot holes and then put in our screws for our last corner. So now that we have all four sides, we can go ahead and move this out the way and grab our tabletop from earlier. Here you can see all of the L brackets that we're going to need, a nice visual of that. And we're going to place the apron on top of the tabletop. So this is the bottom side. We're going to be putting our L brackets here so that you can't see it from the top. You can see here I put down the two by four for the leg to stay out of that zone and then we're going to be drilling our pilot holes for our screws for the tabletop and the side apron. You want to make sure that you use the longer screws for the apron and the shorter screws for the tabletop because you don't want this to drill through to the other side. And you don't have to use these L brackets. Another way to go would just be to put the screws in from the top side straight into the apron. I just prefer the look of these. Here's a visual of all of the L brackets all six or eight of them that we used. And then now here, we're going to be grabbing the legs. As you can see, we're going to be clamping and drilling our pilot holes for our legs and then using the screws for that as well. So you're starting to see here that we're taking advantage of the same three tools so that we can quickly get through this process. And here, once we have that clamped, we're gonna drill on our legs for the other side. And this is the last and final leg that we have. Now that all four legs are done, we're going to be grabbing the bottom supports 
we're going to be using a clamp to hold that in. So because our two by fours are not straight, we're going to be using our clamp in order to bring them back into square. And this is a nice little trick that I like to use. And then we're going to be hitting it down with our block and then drilling our pilot holes and using our screws to put on the bottom supports. So this is nice because it allows us to stay square and it allows us to not have to worry about holding the piece in place while we're trying to put in our pilot holes and our screws. So here we're going to clamp the other side. You're going to see the same method. We use the mallet to tap it down and then we use the clamp to hold it in place. Now that we have the bottom supports in, we're going to go ahead and put in our casters. So I like to use these cabinet screws here because they work really well and I don't have to worry about additional watchers. And so we're just going to clamp those down. Because this is just a cart, it's not going to see a ton of weight. So these cabinet screws will be more than fine. I also try to drill them in at an angle to ensure that I don't split my lumber. Otherwise, we have to take that piece off and cut a whole nother piece. So here you can see a nice close-up of how I'm drilling at an angle. So now that we got all four casters in, it's time to flip over the cart and I wanna make sure I don't hurt myself. So I'm just using gravity here in order to flip it. If you can grab someone else and then I'm just checking since this is the first time that's actually seeing the ground, I wanna make sure that's level. And then we're gonna cut the bottom shelf. So we're gonna be using our drywall square here. And then same method, we're going to be grabbing our crack saw and then we are going to cut our bottom piece and make sure that we have a nice straight cut as usual and then we're going to be left with two pieces we're going to take our vacuum and clean up because why leave extra sawdust and then we're going to remove our track we're going to take our off piece and save that for another project and we're going to save this piece for our bottom shelf and then we're going to put our bottom shelf here we move to the floor make sure you use knee protection we're going to be here at least 10 minutes and the older i get the more valuable this type of stuff becomes when I'm a lot older today than I was yesterday. And then we're going to be drilling in our pie holes here. As you can see, we're also using a clamp to pull it in. And that's just the best way that I've found to do it. If you have a better way, let me know down in the comments. And then now we're also going to be drilling our countersinks and we're going to be putting in our screws. So six or seven screws is good enough here. You don't need to go too far because, again, it's pretty secure. Now we're going to be doing our test where I move this around to make sure that this is stable and so far it's passing with no issues and I'm pretty happy with the way that it's performing. So this build came out exactly how I expected it to. When you guys build your version, go ahead and upload a photo or a video of it. Tag me in it at Neil the Garage Guy on any of the major socials and I'll take a look. As always, I'll see you guys next time I decide to hit the upload button. Peace.